Hey everyone, welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show. In the Mobile User Acquisition Show, we talk about how to use mobile user acquisition strategies to grow your app quickly and capital efficiently. The Mobile User Acquisition Show is presented by me, Shamant Rao, mobile growth leader and founder and CEO of the mobile growth consulting firm, Rocketship HQ. Each episode includes strategies, tips, and pointers from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition that you can use to unlock tremendous growth for your app in a sustainable and capital-efficient manner. Today, I'm excited to present the first episode of the Mobile Dev Demo Academy preview series. Our guest today is Thomas Petit. Thomas is an independent mobile growth consultant working primarily with non-gaming B2C apps. He is an external consultant for large apps, including two unicorns. He is a collaborator assisting several app agencies and is an advisor for very early stage startups. He's run campaigns on Apple Search since day one and has spent over seven figures on the platform directly and has also run audits on many, many accounts. He's certified by Apple, Search Ads HQ, ASO Desk, and is a regular speaker on the topic. In today's episode, we dive into a crucial but very underappreciated aspect of user acquisition on Apple Search and also elsewhere. This is LAT or Limit Ad Tracking. Limit Ad Tracking essentially means you cannot track your users because their IDFAs show up as zero. In this masterclass, Thomas shows us ways to think about and make estimations to understand and capitalize on LAT, even though you cannot track the IDFEs of these users. And this can have a very significant impact on user acquisition strategy. Also, as I said, this is the first of the Mobile Dev Memo Academy preview series, and Thomas is teaching the course, Apple Search Ads Beyond the Basics for Mobile Dev Memo Academy. If you are interested in going much deeper into LAT and all things Apple Search related, you should absolutely check out his course on the Mobile Dev Memo Academy at mdm.academy. I'm very excited to welcome Thomas Petit to the Mobile User Acquisition Show. Thomas, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's been a, a long time. Uh, we wanted to have this chat together. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Indeed, indeed. Uh, it's been a while uh, since we've talked and the world has changed a lot since we've been talking. Uh, also wanted, been very keen on having you because I've certainly followed your Twitter for a long, long time. Uh, for our listeners, that's Thomas BCN. We'll link to that. Definitely learn so much from your Twitter, learn so much from your writings, from everything you've posted online. For all of those reasons, I'm excited to have you, Thomas. Uh, you know, we're going to dive into an area that you are very, that is very, very much a specialty among many other things, right? So there are very many things you're very, very good at, uh, but I think one particular area that you're very particularly experienced in is Apple Search. And we're gonna talk about a very tricky dimension of Apple Search, which is really measuring it accurately, right? Uh, because for the layperson, it might look like there's just no way of getting truly accurate data. Uh, so tell, can you talk to uh, talk about what are some of the key reasons why Apple search reported metrics can differ so massively from what an MMP does, mm -hmm. does report? Yeah. Yeah, because it, it, it always does. And it's a bit of a nightmare to, to be honest. So yeah, I've, I've, I'm looking into this channel in particular, like personal interest of mine, but also because uh, it, it is very different from other channels in terms of insights, in terms of how you manage it, but especially in terms of measurements. And, and maybe that's why I got a little bit more, more detail into that. So in terms of measurement, like there are always discrepancies between your source of data where you're looking in the Facebook interface, uh, your MMP, your own BI, uh, even when data is linked, it's never fully matching. And I think that marketers have accepted this sort of small differences uh, because there's no way to fully solve them. But we're used to acceptable discrepancies. Like maybe 
maybe your Facebook account is going to differ by 5% or like I, I tend to say like if it's under 5% uh, at attribution level, it's probably acceptable. Sometimes it can grow slightly more, depends your settings, window and so on. But typically on search ads, the difference would be around 50% and it can vary quite a lot. Uh, let's say between 30 and 70% difference, which, so we're talking about one is the double than the other, which, uh, so that's the reason why it's a nightmare. The reason it's happening, there are multi factors here at, at play. Um, I've, uh, I'll try to link it. I've, I've published a, a video on AppSpire blog that details a little bit more those reasons. Um, and at some point, uh, Apple has actually communicated early about it, but they've been uh, staying a bit silent for the, for the last couple of years. So the first one you need to understand is the definition of Apple and your MMPR different. Uh, what Apple calls an install is when the package is installed on the device, but there's a bunch of users who are actually never going to launch it. And the MMP can only see it after the first open. What we call in, in an install on an MMP is actually a first open. I don't think the difference is massive, but it can lead to at least 5% difference. And I think that's a bigger case if your app is very big. Like if it's a one gigabyte app, it's more likely that it's gonna take a while to get on the device and so that, uh, so that can happen. I don't think it's a major reason for discrepancy, but it does exist. Um, and re-downloads are dealt very differently between Apple and, and the MMP, especially since Apple calls re-download a bunch of different things. Uh, I can't detail more about that. Uh, it's a bit lengthy. Um, and in the early days of search ads, there was, um, I could confirm uh, from various sources that there was a problem with the API between Apple and the MMPs. There was a latency that makes that a few install would escape the connection there. I don't know if that problem has been solved. It's obviously pretty complicated to get Apple to recognize that their tech system are not working the way they're supposed to. Uh, but I knew it used to be a problem up to like five, eight percent. I want to believe that they solve it in, in large way, but I, I, I don't know. And, and then we've got the LAT people, the limited tracking people, which among all these factors are a pretty big one. I'd say probably the biggest with the redownload factor. So all these small factors of two, three, five percent, they add up, of course, but the two big ones, they're like reattribution and, and this LAT people. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And as you said, the difference can be as huge as 50 percent which is why, you know, for, for, for a lot of channels, if it's like five, 10%, you can just say, well, let's just take the MMP number with 50%, it can be enormous, right? And re-downloads and LAT, you said are the biggest. Re-downloads are understandable. Can you talk about LAT? Yeah, that, that, that's the core reason for, for the difference. I mean, if you solve the LAT problem, it's not gonna solve the whole discrepancy, but it's definitely a, a, a very big one. And uh, I say 50% like sort of an average, but I'm yeah. seeing accounts where the difference is actually 70, 80%. So yeah. uh, Apple would declare 100 install and I've got 20 in my MP, which is like, yeah. oh, uh, yeah. we've got a problem here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this, yeah, the LAT people, like first, first maybe I should say like what, what they are for people who are not too, too aware, I will call them LAT, which are the, the letters, the acronym for limit ad tracking. That's an option that both Google and Apple have, have enabled for users to do for many, many years, but it wasn't really uh, communicated broadly, where basically you would have to go yourself to the setting and activate this option, uh, which leads to your advertising number or IDFA to be wiped out to zero. So sometimes right. we would call the LAT cohort the IDFA zero cohort, it's uh, pretty much the same thing. So you, you, we don't, advertiser and MMP can't rely on this advertising number to tie campaigns to result. Um, but users have to take that step by themselves. Like it's never by default that this option is, is activated. And so we, we would like this, obviously this behavior can change a little bit. Right. Like uh, and maybe we, we'll get onto that, but um, yeah. So this is challenging for search ads, 
because Apple always reports the LAT on installing its interface and you never see them in your MMP. They actually come to your app, but they mark as organic. Like Apple is not passing the data at all to your MMP. Right. Right. Uh, so you can assume that they're all coming in the organic. You can also extrapolate some data to verify if it's true or at least partially true, entirely true. Um, and this is very specific. I mean, LAT users exist by themselves, not on channels. Uh, the thing is different channels have decided to deal with this problem differently. If we take um, SDCAD networks such like Aplovin or Chartboost or uh, I don't want to not name them, but then I'd have a long list, but you see what, what yeah. I'm talking about. Uh, they do show ads to this user, but the MMP managed to attribute most of them through other techniques, not the IDF0. Mm -hmm. So you probably have a normal cohort of LAT attributed to that channel. So it's not really a problem in this case. Um, there is a very little known fact that for me is absolutely critical to know is Facebook has decided to never show mobile app ads to LAT users. Mm -hmm. And because the LAT cohort is say 20, 30% approximately in the, in the ecosystem, that means that a huge amount of your potential audience is never going to see the ads on Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's not that these people don't get ads. Like some yeah. people actually on the user side, not advertiser side, a lot of people have wrong assumption about it. Like thinking, oh, if I activate this, I'm not going to get ads anymore. No, it's exactly. just, you're not going to get relevant ads targeted at you, but you're still going to get a lot of ads. And in the case of Facebook in particular, what happens is Facebook is showing you web ads on mobile. Right. So you would have e-commerce, DTC, any kind of like lead stuff, lead generation yeah. stuff. Uh, so you will still have the ads, but you never see games and apps advertised to you when, right. when you have the option on. And right. the reason I'm saying it is for one, it's like, it's not a problem for the advertiser because uh, in terms of measurement and tracking, you just don't have them. But I think they should know it because you probably want to reach that cohort elsewhere. Uh, maybe on Apple search ads, maybe on an SDK network. Maybe you want yeah. to run web campaigns toward a landing page and then to your app to yeah. get this cohort back. I mean, if you're only advertising on Facebook and Instagram, which happens quite often for early stage advertiser, you're missing out on 20, 30% of, of your potential audience, which is absolutely massive, really, yeah. really big. Yeah. No, that is a huge number, as you said, and I didn't yeah. realize they were not targetable at all, not targeted by Facebook at all. And of course, you, they are targeted on, you know, or Apple, but as you said, you can't, you know, they just show up as organic. So it sounds like the best ways to target these LAT users is to go via some of the SDK networks that use presumably fingerprinting to identify some of these users and uh, or via Apple, right? I would still add that the web is actually a, a third very good arm there. So uh -huh. what I'm, what, why do I mention the SDK network specifically is because the programmatic is heavily reliant on, on the IDFA. So typically you'd see almost 0% if you're going on, a, on an open programmatic network. The SDK yeah. network are not. So that's sort of right. a big difference between our networks. Um, right. So you've got Apple, you've got the SDK networks, and then you've got everything you can do on the web. Like I, I'm, I'm working with a lot of advertisers that are going back to the web Google ads uh, yeah. to get keywords back. So you would have yeah. them there. I work with a bunch of apps who are heavily advertising on Adbrand and Tabula. So you'd also have the... 20, 30% cohort there. So yeah. the, the web would be the third one to complete the, your, you know. Right. So these would be user, you would direct users to a web page and then those would be directed to the app store. Absolutely. Uh, in some cases, you can actually hack your way through and make the platform believe that they're going to the web page, but the user is multi redirected and ends on to the app store it's usually not authorized and it doesn't work really well uh, yeah. for a bunch yeah. of reasons when you hack your way through that. So yeah, yeah basically through landing pages, which is typically right. something you'd see on uh, native content ad like Outbrain right. and Tabula where there's a piece of content, an extra step in the funnel between the ad and, and yeah. the store. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that all makes sense. And you said, you know, typically it's 20, 30%, which is huge. 
but you did say there are apps where there is like 70% on. So is it that, so, and you did express that, look, users had to manually go in and turn it on. So are the users that for it, it's on by, off by default? What, what's the reason it, the range is so huge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of, of different reasons. So first, I'm going to be very specific so I don't get called for bullshit is I didn't say there's 70% LAT sometimes. I say there's 70% difference between Apple and the MMP, like of right. all the reasons. Oh, right. yes. I, I can't remember a vertical where LAT was really 70% across the whole board. Mm -hmm. um, so those, the LAT range, they would vary a lot. First, because it depends where you advertise your app. Like if mm -hmm. you have very little organic activity, and you heavily use Facebook and programmatic, uh, then it's very likely your LAT is going to be extremely low because you're just not reaching them ever. Yeah. Then you've got ads that rely a lot more on because they have a past existency on the web or so on. So first, it's a little bit like the context of your app. I don't think that's the bigger one. Um, two massive one. One is geographical. And I think that's related to culture, but also maturity about using a phone. And typically, the U.S. would be one of the markets where the range are the highest. Uh, I talked to Apple recently. They're not sharing it publicly, but they told me that in last quarter in the U.S., the average rate was 30%. Wow. So you can mm -hmm. go to your MMP or, or analytics and check what's the rate. If you're seeing that you've got 10, 15, or 20% in the U.S., is you're probably not reaching a bunch of your audience. Like in the U.S., 30 yeah. I'd say on a worldwide level, it's probably around 20%. Uh, Singular published a massive uh, data set recently. I can't remember what was the exact number, but I think it was 20, 25%. I would have to check. Um, sure. and, and then it depends on country. Like, for example, Russia and Brazil have extremely low LAT rate. I don't know if it's culturally they don't care about uh, privacy tracking or if... I, I don't know the reason, but that's the, I've observed this across a lot of apps. Uh, both Singular and Apple have confirmed with me that Russia and Brazil are complete outliers. There, there's one country that is a complete mystery to me, which is Germany. Um, when you, I, I mean, I, I lived in Germany a couple of years. Uh, it seems that culturally they are more privacy conscious aware. Like they talk a lot about they don't want to be tracked by Facebook and blah, blah. And the laws are stricter. They're still like, it's, it's a big topic of conversation. But then you look at the late rates in that country and they're much smaller than the rest of European country, which I can't explain. I just, I, yeah. I have zero hypothesis for that. Yeah. Um, but but it's, it's, it's an interesting thing to observe, you know. Uh, always, you know, uh, what, what people say, what they do. Like uh, there's often a, a gap here. So yeah, so country is a huge one. Uh, Again, I think this singular study uh, disclosed yeah. a bunch of other countries. A another one is linked to vertical. Like, uh, I, yeah. I often give this example because I think it's the most extreme, which are the VPN apps, which, of course, there are people who are a lot more likely to be conscious about the privacy. And right. in that particular vertical, you can see insane LAT rates. Like moving from the 20% average, you're getting to 50, 60, 70%. Like it's really insane. Right. Um, so if you're only advertising your VPN app on Facebook and programmatic, uh, you're in big trouble because your audience is, is very limited. Um, right. There's another case that is very particular, but it's one I work very closely with, which are the kids app. Mm -hmm. um, and that's specific to Apple. It's not about the ecosystem by itself. Like it, it would be normal, but on Apple search channels, Apple self categorized as LAT, even though it's not activated on the device, anyone who's under 18. Mm -hmm. So Apple decided that they're not going to show ads to people under 13 for legal reasons. But the cohort of teenagers between 13 and 17, 100% of them gets labeled in Apple search ads as LAT on because Apple doesn't think that advertisers should use this data, but they still allow other networks to see it. And what that means is if you operate an app that has particularly big area for teenagers or underage in general, um, some social networks have a higher rate because of that. On search ads, again, like this is not affect your necessarily the, the organic and other cohorts, but on search ads in particular, if you've got a very young audience, uh, it's definitely more of a problem. What, one of the apps I, I work with on search ads that is specifically for, for kids uh, it's very common to see a LAT rate of 50, 60%. Uh, 
but I believe it's only 20, 30% of people who activated the option. And then we've got a maybe 30% cohort of Apple sort of detect them for us and blocks tracking there. So vertical countries, and it also varies over time and it's growing up. So roughly we can say that it's, grew, it's grown by about 50% in the, in the last two years, moving yeah. from 20 to 30%. Uh, there is a very bizarre thing that it's moving the other way on Android and the rate has gone down. That's a very much of an iOS specific problem. Well, first yeah. because Apple search is only on, on iOS, but in the LAT in general, uh, the Android rates would be around two, three percent. Um, wow. I, I've got a bunch of theory, but I don't have a lot of evidence to yeah. show why uh, this is. Um, and it's very weird because a few years ago, Android used to be at an iOS level, like 15, 20 percent. And it's gone down to like 3%, which is yeah. very bizarre, uh, to say the least. But, um, yeah. Interesting. What, what's your strongest hypothesis about why Android is different? Yeah. I, I'm not sure I want to go on the record with that one because I think Google has a DAC pattern to force you out, even if you put the settings. Um, yeah. uh, until I have evidence, I'll, I, I'll leave it there Certainly. for people to go investigate. Uh, I'm on it. So keep posted. Uh, when I find hard evidence, you'd get it. I, we will keep an eye on your Twitter and uh, as soon as it's up, we will have you back for a second episode. Yeah. Uh, so you, I know you spoke about, you know, percentages of lat users. Uh-huh. How might a marketer find out what percentage of users is, are actually lat users? Well, I mean, if you never look into it, that's definitely something that uh, it's not, you have to be obsessed about it, but First, if you operate on search ads, you should, because it's yeah. a huge gap. Uh, the easiest way, because you don't, have, you don't need any tooling, is within the Apple search ads interface, you can see uh, out of 100 install, 30 at the LAT on, because Apple discloses to you. You might have to add a few columns that are not by default, but they're there. What I do recommend is you actually check up either in your MMP, they do provide them, or in directly in your analytics, because you can isolate it show me the cohort of IDFA zero. So right. one, to understand a little bit the channel, but also to understand, like, as I said before, were you actually missing out on, on that cohort because right. Facebook was such a, an important share that maybe you've pushed very hard there and you might want to consider, if your rate of LAT is extremely low and it's not related to your vertical, it's probably there is some actions that you can think about which I usually spend a little less percentage on Facebook, but uh, uh, there are other ways to, uh, to do that. Um, so definitely have a check on it. Uh, don't obsess with it, but it's good to know in general. And I think it's, it's a must know for search ads in particular. Certainly, certainly. So what you're saying is just because the IDFA comes as zero, yep. that is tracked in MMPs. Sure. So that, is, that should be visible within the MMPs. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you export the, the raw data, you, you, you see them because the IDFA would be a field. Um, yeah. I can't remember how it's displayed on the App Slider dashboard, but I, I, I know for sure that on the Adjust dashboard, there is a column that shows yes. the LAT rate. So yeah. you can yeah, straight yeah. it there. But it doesn't even stop at the MMP. I mean, if you're looking at your own BI or at analytical sure. tool, you can isolate this cohort because you just go and say, okay, show me. Uh, the cohort of IDFA zero versus anything that's not zero and, and you'd get yeah. it there. So whether it's in amplitude, mixed panel, your own BI, yeah. if the, like, I mean, you just have to surface that field, but the, the field right. is there. I'm not right. too sure about Firebase there, yeah, but uh, pretty much every tool should yeah. be able to surface that field. No, that makes a lot of sense. Now, now that LAT is real, how do you, le- uh, how do you adjust your bidding strategy to account for that? So, so here we're, we're talking specifically about the context of, of search ads because elsewhere okay. there's not much you can yeah. really do anyway about uh, except being conscious about it. So yeah. on, on search ads, I mean, most of the people at first, they were like, ah, whatever. And, and then they realized that there was this discrepancy. So the, the first tactic was to actually say, oh, these people are not tracked. I don't want them because they're not gonna count on my result. So I'm gonna go only for the LAT off. 
Uh, on Apple, you do that by selecting um, uh, age criteria. So as soon as you say, oh, I want user over 18 years old, uh, Apple would stop showing the ads to a late young user. Problem is a lot of advertisers have done that and that put a lot of pressure on the LAT off inventory, which is a lot more expensive. Obviously, if you have half of the market only bidding on that pocket of inventory, that pocket of yeah. inventory becomes more expensive. I do have internal data from Apple that I'm not supposed to share that shows that the LAT on cohort is a third cheaper to acquire on search ads. It's very tricky because you can't track it directly in MMP, but it's also a lot cheaper. I think it would be a, a shame to miss out on it. In yeah. games, it's even even cheaper than a third. I think that was around forty percent. Can't remember the exact geography scope here, but yeah. like let's say let's say a third cheaper. Yeah. So I, I've got like a, a bit more detail on that. I'm I'm running a, a workshop on how to deal with LAT nightmare on the MDM Academy in, in a couple yes. of weeks, and. Yes. So basically, there's the strategy of, oh, I don't want these guys, which has pressured the inventory. There's the strategy of, okay, I'll take them all and make some extrapolation, which is what I've been doing in the early days. And I know a bunch of people doing it like this. I don't particularly like this extrapolation, but at least you're targeting them and you're getting them. Um, and, and I'm going a little bit more depth about how to extrapolate this from search ads, from your organic and so on. There's what I do recommend now and I've practiced for, uh, well, it's been a long time now, but whatever, is to actually have both group, like targeting the LAT off only and then targeting everybody. You can't target them specifically. So you would have to have, because there's no overlap issues on such as like we have on, on Facebook and other network, basically multiply your ad group, your keyword or whatever by two and right. have a bid for the LAT off because they're more trackable, they're more expensive, and have another big level for the other one. So you do have right. to run a bunch of extrapolation on this, but um, so maybe in a fictitious case, I'd bid up to $1 per click for the general population, and I'd bid $2 per click for the right. LAT off. This has an extra benefit, which is on the cheaper group, uh, it's not 100% LAT on. So you're also getting a bunch of LAT off for cheaper than you would have gotten them if you only yeah. target them uh, in LAT off. So it's also a way to expand. It's it's a way to expand your audience, but to actually lower down top funnel prices by splitting in this way. It makes the structure a little bit uh, uh, like more complex. Like there's a bit more burden structure, but in the era of automation, I don't think that's a problem for for a lot of people. Yeah. That is, that's very smart to essentially have a two-pronged strategy where you're targeting both. And like you said, there's no downside, literally, right? Well, Did, there is a little bit of downside because there's noise in, right. in the LAT on cohort. So you're, yeah. never, you're never entirely sure. And you have to run through extrapolation about yeah. that performance of that group. But I still think it's a lot more upside than downside. And, and yeah. I'm going to even add something else. I really recommend to actually apply this to also new user versus returning users. Um, so for a long time, I had like for every single keyword, I would have four ad group, like a uh, new LAT on, new LAT off, returning LAT on, returning LAT off. I realized you only need three ad groups because in your LAT on, Apple says they don't want to know if this user is a new or returning user. So they target both, even if you put new users only. Right. Which there is a contradiction in here because they do report if they're redownloads or not. So right. they can't right. tell me at the same time that they know because they're reporting it, but that they don't know, they don't want, uh, anyway, yeah. there's sort of an internal Apple thing yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, but basically what I do now is I have three groups. I have new LAT off, returning LAT off, and the, the, what I call the open group that has a bit of everything. New returning LAT on, LAT off. Uh, right. That one is the most shaky one, but I've had yeah. really good results with these three ad group per uh, like strategy. Right, that I think is very granular and very sophisticated. That makes a lot of sense. For clarifying the actual tactical execution, to target LAT off you LAT on users, all you do is target eighteen plus. Is that exactly. is that right? 
Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So if you, at first I thought that any kind of uh, demographic criteria would change uh, yeah. and switch to LATR. I've came to realize that location doesn't exclude LATR. I think gender does it. I don't use gender a lot, but like, let's say yeah. you've got a, an app that is very gender specific. If you always target only women uh, mm -hmm. or only men, then you will never get the LAT off either. So it's either age or gender, but doesn't apply to, to location. A lot of the apps who are looking at, at return on ad spend anyway are interested to target 18 plus because usually they convert yeah. better to, to monetize, like to, I work a lot with subscription. Might not be true for ads actually, but um, anyway. So the structure would be, you have one group where you leave all use all kind of user, which is the default option on Apple. So if you don't touch anything, you have what I call the open group. And then the two other group, you would select, I want 18 plus user new and 18 plus user returning. Right. And new and returning, you can segment within the ads, the setup itself. Yeah. So Perfect. at the ad group level, so it's not something you can do at the keyword or campaign level, but at the ad group level, when you go and when you create it, it's there. But if you go and edit the app group, you yeah. have type of users. So that would be new and returning. There's uh, also one that's called user of your other apps if you've got a portfolio. And then you've got the demographic criteria that are gender, age, and location. Um, right. And all of this happened at the ad group level. And that's why before I was saying, what I do is I create three ad groups with the same keywords inside because they have difference in how the settings at the ad group level are done. Right. And I can see how that will let you go after lat on users. So you're not excluding them from your targeting, right? And they get, they're cheaper. That makes a lot of sense. What, and, but they're still not coming into your MMP. They're still not showing up. They still show up as organic in your MMP. Yes. Considering, and so how do you think about estimating their LTV or monetization or retention profile of these mm -hmm. lat users, if at all? Here, I think there are like two, two main ways of doing it. Um, the first one, which is sort of the easy one that marketers are inclined to do, and I've, I'm promoting it myself and other people too, which is basically extrapolating based on the LAT number. So let's say you know that the track cohort has generated 100 and that there was 20% of LAT user in this mix, you would add this 20% and say, oh, it's probably, a, I'm going to take $20 out of the organic cohort and attribute it to my search ads cohort, like the LAT on cohort. Um, this methodology is okay and it's very easy, but I think it's a little bit shaky in the sense that one, I've seen cases where it looked like it, that was wrong. Uh, there may be edge cases and all, but I, w I became a bit suspicious of my own method on some edge case. And I was like, mm. then taking revenue from the organic is not a great practice because then you open a Pandora box for marketers where everybody's going to go and pick their, their revenue to the organic bucket, which yeah. can lead to some bizarre situation like the Uber case that was detailed recently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so... It's still, it's still a decent one to have an ID. So I do use it as, a, as an input, but I don't report on it. Like what I would do is I factor it. And typically when I manage a whole team with people with different channel, I would tell them, I'm only going to look at the MMP result, but I'm going to assign you a lower ROAS goal than other channel because I know right. there is an effect. And maybe it's not the full 20%, but I'm going to give you 10, 15% liberty. What, one of the thing here is one of the problem of this method would, is assuming that LAT on have the exact same behavior as LAT off. And while that might be the case, and Apple once communicated that they do, uh, they remove this sentence from the documentation. And I'm inclined to think that it's not true. First, because of the underage cohort, uh, sure. which there's no way the 13 to 17 years old cohort is behaving the same as the 18 plus cohort. Like mm -hmm. I'm not buying it. And mm -hmm. then for a bunch of other reasons, I believe people who go and self opt into that option, they have to have a, a very like a specific profile, right. Right. which I'm not saying they're spending more or less. It's really hard to determine, but uh, and uh, it's not hard to determine. It's just, it varies. I've seen apps for whom this cohort is 
a better cohort and as from it's a worse cohort. So right. the other one I invite you to do is actually start splitting your organics into organics LAT off and organic LAT on in your internal right. systems. Right. One, because you can understand if the behavior differs. So you don't understand if the search ads user, because organic comes as a whole and it's a lot of different behavior. Maybe it's featuring, maybe it's search, maybe it's brand search, maybe it's virality. Yeah. Like it yeah. all comes yeah. into this bucket, but it gives you a, a rough idea. The other one, and that would be like sort of on quality. So you would measure the behavior of this cohort against your organic and against search ads. So I basically have three cohorts, uh, search ads LAT off, organic LAT off, and organic LAT on. And I compared them in terms of onboarding, conversion, retention, renewal, LTV, and so on. The other one is to actually monitor over time the size of this cohort. And typically what I recommend is stop targeting LAT on for a week or two. Right. And look how your organic two cohorts are evolving. And then you can start making extrapolation on how much I am really not seeing in my MMP. And that's yeah. where you start saying that it's not exactly the extrapolation you're seeing from the dashboard. That's why right. I've become a little bit more cautious with this method now that I use the secondary yeah. method. I yeah. recommend people to use both. It's a little bit complex. I guess if you operate at a small scale, you can just forego this. Yeah. If you operate at a large scale, that would be a mistake not to run this analysis. Indeed. Yeah, uh, right. And just the fact that the IDFA shows a zero means there's some ways to measure it, even if it's yeah. not uh, what Apple, you know, is mandating that you do, right? Uh, yeah, of course. So you, you've got a bunch of people in this cohort of organic LAT on. You've got people who came from search ads and you contract them. You've got people yeah. who came just like the other organics. And yeah. I want to believe because of how fingerprinting is done, that you also have spillover from uh, the web and, and right. SDK network activity. Yeah. And then you've got the normal organic. So this cohort is a little bit of a, of a bizarre cohort by itself. Uh, it's definitely not only search ads, uh, Indeed. but uh, still a very interesting one to monitor. And to be honest, I don't see a lot of people putting much attention there. The few cases yeah. where I've seen them done it, we got a, a lot of, of very good learning. And even if yeah. you don't learn anything, at least you validate that your assumption of not looking at them was the right one. Indeed, indeed. And as you said, this lat bucket is at least 20, 30% in many cases. So it's definitely worth investing time and effort into. Yeah, so it's 20, 30% in, in the nature, like in the ecosystem. Right. Right. For many apps I work with, uh, it's actually less, but I would right. be like somewhere between so maybe around 15%. Uh, the, the reasons are if you use a lot of paid activity, it's more likely to be less. Yes. And, and then it depends on your geographic split. If you right. only work in the US, then it's likely to be bigger. If you're very strong in emerging countries, it's likely to be smaller. So usually yeah. on, if you go to there, to your analytic tool or MMP tool, and you look at the, the total of all channels on iOS only, it's going to look like probably somewhere between 10 and 25%. Yeah. Uh, again, that's iOS only. If you mix the, the, if you forget to put the iOS filter, you're gonna go to an analytical tool and say, hey, dude, that's like 6% or 7%. Why are you bothering with that? Yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah. you're mixing a 20% cohort on iOS with a 2% yeah. cohort of Andre. So right. definitely split the OS when you're running this analysis. Indeed, indeed, Thomas. I think this has been incredibly insightful about a topic that isn't quite as much spoken about as we, we would all like it to be talked about. So go ahead, please. It's a little bit geeky and nerdy. And yeah. to be honest, it, it, it's, I don't like it because of its own complexity, although it does yeah. pose an intellectual challenge that I do like. Uh, I, I do look at it just because it's not very debated, because yeah. the networks wouldn't educate you about it, because the yeah. platform don't mention it. And yeah. because I think it brings light on, on the paid organic relation in, 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 in many, many different ways, like both in volume exactly. and in, in quality. And that, I mean, UA people shouldn't focus only on the paid cohort. You have to understand yes. what's the impact overall, what's the blended impact. Yeah. And I think understanding the LAT is 
is a way to start understanding this relationship a lot more. I'm happy to educate a lot of people around this topic. I've given several talks. Uh, we've gone in pretty much depth today, and I'm pretty sure I will have uh, to keep doing it. I'm happy. Uh, I don't have the... Uh, there's a lot to be found too, so I wish I would also be challenged by other people so I can learn because there's a yeah. lot to discover about. There's very little information about it, and I'm I'm happy to share. Uh, if people got confused, uh, they can pick me. We'll have a chat on, on one of those Slack groups, Twitter, whatever, LinkedIn. Uh, I'm I'm happy to chat about this issue because I, I discover stuff all the time, chatting with more developers uh, about it. Absolutely, absolutely, and we will link to your Twitter. We will link to your upcoming course and the, on the Mobile Dev Memo Academy, and we will uh, link to that in the promote for this episode just as well, Thomas. Yeah, thanks. Oh. Very much appreciated, Tim. Absolutely. Uh, it's been an honor having you. Thank you so much, Thomas. Hi, no worries. Thanks. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here, or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog. Thank you.